Hey, Pete. Hey. You ready to drop the deuce? Let's drop it. Whoa, 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 what? I'm Adam Ennis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. Continuing our series here at the piano at uh, our beautiful open studio headquarters in the studio. Uh, we're sitting at the piano. We're looking at you, YouTube. Looking at Got you. Got our overhead camera. Maybe we should have a name for this. You're like conversations from the keyboard or something. Keyboard oh. conversation. What is this, a PBS show? <laughs> <laughs> and we could wear like period costume from... Man, do you watch... Slide aside here. Do you watch any of those... Um, I don't want to use the word horrible, but that's what comes to mind. Those PBS shows that are like period pieces. Well, so my wife is obsessed with them, which means that I have to watch them. So is mine. Mine yeah, is yeah. too. Although, what is it about that? I found the, a the, nice bar that's open on Sunday. They all come on Sunday nights. They so do. We need to start meeting. <laughs> Actually, we should do our, our, period, our PBS period piece uh, uh, club, and we don't watch any of them. We right. just get together at uh, Taste or something. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But what, what is the one, I don't even know if it's still on, the really big one. Like well, there the, was Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey. Yeah, that was okay, I actually played a gig once for like a watch party for the premiere of... No way. Yes, and everybody wore period piece costumes except for me. And it was weird. It was a little bit like a cult. Wow. How was that a gig? <laughs> and they raised, they raised a lot of money for PBS. Well, that's good. Yeah. But why, why have modern jazz on the Downton Abbey I, That party? was weird. That was very weird. That's yeah, crazy. It was very strange. Wow. Uh, I, I, why are you boxing me in? How you know actually, this modern jazz I was playing? So Downton Abbey, which I've seen <laughs> all the way through. and, oh, and uh, Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, I love the theme song for that show, actually. Really? There's a, some hip moments on, a theme, mm. on that theme song. That's a, some good okay. writing. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. Nice. Uh, what do we got today? Does this have anything to do with what we're talking about? No, it does not. No, but <laughs> you, know, you guys know what I'm talking about in the theme? Where it's like... There's a moment. There's okay. A moment. Yeah. yeah, and it's not like a period theme, is it, as I recall. It's kind no, of modern. No, it's kind yeah. of modern, yeah. Okay, so this, we have a question from um, one of our listeners, and we're switching places from the last couple of days here because I think that you have such a great, uh, you, Adam, have such a great concept and understanding of, of what this question is about. So we're just going to read it first. This is from Ben, and um, he says, I really enjoyed Adam's 10-minute take on Barry Harris's diminished sixth system on the podcast. Uh, oh, this was one of your solo ones. It was, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it made something that I'd struggled to understand previously very easy to grasp. I was wondering if you might be able to do something similar for drop two chords, both how to construct them, practice them, and how to use them meaningfully while playing. Uh, and I think that's great. Like, like, It's so great. Construct them, practice, and I love that you said using them meaningfully because that's always a part of the process. It's not just about understanding the theory of it and being able to play them. How do you apply it meaningfully? Yeah, no, that's good. And if you thought... Uh, ben, if you thought that it was that I made uh, the dra- the uh, Barry Harris thing easy to understand, this is going to be even easier. This might be a two minute episode because right, right. if you understood the Barry Harris thing, then then this is just a natural takeoff. This man, can- two minutes from now, we're going to be back to analyzing P- PBS docudramas. Man, watch. That's right. <laughs> so I will say something about uh, the drop two. I mean, it's a great voicing concept, and and for me, it's evolved over the years, uh, especially watching you play it because I know it's like it's, I don't think it's anything that you've like particularly you know, shed it on. I have to know every single, single drop to, but you kind of play it naturally in your tenths. Mm. And I've seen other great players. Keezer kind of plays it naturally. I and mean, he knows a lot about drop two, but yeah. uh, he, he plays it more in the context of tenths. Mm. And so the, that's the first thing I'll say about this pen is this is really on the piano. It's a way to play in tenths. And I think if you think about it that way, it can it kind of fills in the rest of it. Right. Okay. So, but you don't mean actually playing a tenth. What, so, between both hands. So, I mean, the, the important parts are this. Oh, right. And then this is not secondary. It matters. Mm-hmm. But really, what you're getting out of it is this sound. And when you hear people like Oscar Peterson play in a drop two style occasionally, or even someone like Art Tatum would would play these things, but he was always playing in the concept of tenths first, right? Right, right. He would start off playing tenths and then fill in the chord, and that's kind of how I think this got developed. Right. And then, of course, uh, as most jazz musicians like to do, we overanalyze it and put it into theory, and, and then, then everybody, it. <laughs> and then yeah, and then everybody thinks like, oh, it's ju- it's just this all the right. time. And I have to say, like, I don't really think it is. I, mm-hmm. I think it could be a number of things. So, so like anything, I think that we would we would teach you like. You know, take with a grain of salt, figure out your own way of doing it. That's what all these masters did with it. You know, everybody has their, their own different way of approaching right. this. But for me, it's easiest, I think, if we come off of those George Shearing style voices, mm-hmm. voicings, which I talked about in the Barry Harris thing, right? Which is 
like a C major six block chord with the, the C on each octave. This is the, the kind of easy way to get in the drop two, right? Yep. So uh, one, three, five, six octave. One, three, five, six octaves. And are you, you thinking about the construction of it like that? specifically yeah you, especially getting into it because yeah. it's easy to see because we know because th this is an easy voicing and if you know this kind of thing already yep then it's easy to see it as okay i take the second to top note the, you know if we're going one two three four five yeah. on this five, that's from the bottom or from the top, top down, down right one two three four five if i take that two and i drop it down an octave and then i take what was the bottom note and i just leave it off so a five note voicing becomes a four note voicing yep open but these two are connected and that this is the kind of closed version of the voicing yep. and this is the open version of the voicing and that can be done if this is the closed version of that barry harris scale then this is the open or the drop two version mm -hmm. just like that uh, and this is a great way to start, right? Because that's so easy to see yep. the difference. It's, it's just a C major six diminished, C major six diminished, C major six. Yep. But then it goes much, much deeper, and, and there's so much that you can do with it. Um, so, but I would start there. If you kind of get that Barry Harris, and then again, it's just like the Barry Harris thing. Mm -hmm. it could be minor, you know. Um, work on the arpeggios of this and then the more and more you get into this the freer that you become and there yeah. I mean you know you can break this down forever and try to write things out and try to systematize it yeah. as much as possible but you know I think your ears are the ultimate judge and if you play around with this you're gonna find that there are some things that are not so easily defined and, and systematized, and maybe you don't actually want to think about it like that. Like, yeah. So, for instance, you know, if I'm playing a two five one mm -hmm. in C here, I'm not going to think about it in the in the sort of you know uh, Barry Harris six diminished thing. I'm going to think about this D minor, the Dorian. Like I'm going to keep the middle notes the same. Really, I'm really thinking tense here. Yeah. And trying to fill in and the chord, one or two kind yeah, of, yeah, with what I think sounds good. I don't. I, I might even put three notes in the middle if I think that sounds right. good. You know, I'm not going to be cluster it up a little bit. Exactly. I'm not yep. going to be beholden to this idea. Uh, I want to get it as close to it, you know in my hands as possible. But I want to make sure that what I'm playing sounds good to me. Yeah. And is is creative to me. Man, play the ones, the first ones you did before you just did this. No, 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 before that. When you oh. were, yeah, the four, man, that's very much like, you know, WC kind of woodwind exactly. voicing. Yeah, I mean, and you can hear it, you know, you can hear it in block chords in a closed voice. Yeah. yeah. You really get that. But, but. There. Nuage, image. C'est bon. These are just locked hands here, just. C'est la vie. You know? Uh, and then, like, on, at the end of this 2 5, I did. Yeah. You recognize that? Oh yeah. Ooh, little, little holdover from yesterday. Yeah. So this is the half hold diminished. diminished. Mm. Woo! Nice. Again, locked hands. Also sounds great, by the way. But drop two here. I have. So again, you can even think about this as these, um, like minor six chords. You yeah. Know? One or two. Are you thinking like like go through that same descending thing with just the outside with the tenths? Because when you said at the beginning, you think about it as tenths. Once you start to pull away, right? Would that be one way maybe to practice? Totally. Like especially with this, you're going over the diminished. So scale this is a diminished happen. scale in tenths, right? Yeah. And then to fill in the chord, I like this sound where I add in, um, like here I have G on the bottom and yeah. B flat on the top, and I have B natural and E flat in the middle, and then just move that down to minor thirds. Mm -hmm. Just those two notes. 
And then it gets fun when you start practicing this kind of, you know, you can practice this going up. Mm. Nice. Those sound really, really great. Yep. So that's kind of the beginnings for me of drop two. And like I said, Ben, think of it uh, first. I think of it as tense and, and you know, you can, you're going to find things that sound really good to fill in in the middle. These are pretty standard, yep. you know, pretty like straight down but the middle. But good point of departure probably, right? Great point of departure. Yep. Experiment it with different scales. Experiment it a lot with the melodic minor. Mm -hmm. Experiment with the diminished scales over yep. diminished chords, over, you know, the, the whole half and the half whole. It seems like with the diminished there, you really get those opportunities and like you were resolving to that big fat 6-9, I think major 6-9 yeah. on that one. But you've really got some things you could go up down whatever but you're going to be resolving somewhere you're going to be yeah, yeah, yeah usually usually like there, there's a destination in mind. um and then you know the the best test of this is to play a melody with it you mm -hmm. know mm. yep Beautiful. find find a standard and be able to voice it now i actually didn't do a great job voicing it the challenge that can happen with block two, which doesn't happen as much when you do the George Shearing style, yep, yep. the melody is so strong on the George Shearing. Right, right. It's so the top and the bottom. So you really have to think about the voicing and how you voice it, yep. the voicing of it. And by voicing of it, I mean what note's coming out. And if you're doing the melody, mm. and again, this is where it could help to not think about everything as locked hands yep, and whatever, yep, but yep. think about tenths. Because maybe I lay off some of the chords, right? You know, and let, mm. yeah, come through. Yep, um, and that can be very helpful. I so love that. Always think with the melody in mind when you're playing the melody. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that's cool. So drop two. Does this lead to you being able to drop it like it's hot? Drop it like it's hot. Bro, drop, I do that. Is that part of it? All day, every okay. day. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't know, know that about was, me. You know that about me? Come on, man. That's how we do it. I didn't <laughs> know if that was a separate technique. I got or my that. shiny white shoes on. I'm ready to go. <laughs> but then drop it like it's hot. Um, cool. All right. Well, Ben, Ben, thank you so much for the question. This was super interesting to me as well, because it's definitely something that I occasionally kind of play, but I wanted to understand more. And so this is some fun ways for us to practice it. And I think I love the, the, the concept of really getting out of the locked in, like go, going to the outside, the same way we talk about practicing melodies and root movements. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, it's really not that different from this, although there's not necessarily the roots and the 10th the below is normally moving with the melody, but it's still that like outside to inwards. And then we start to hear what we can put a, as you learn these. I, I think, think that's the, the way to go. Ones. I mean, and Ben, if you want to get deeper in this, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of people who've written about this who know a lot more about it than me. And I encourage you to do your own research, but I think this is a good starting place for that. Yeah. And, and the key to any of this, whatever we're talking about is always listen. That's right. Use your ears first. Absolutely. So. Cool. And then also, yes. Yeah, so the last sentence of Ben's question, this is kind of funny, really enjoying the podcast makes me feel less alone in learning jazz piano later in life in a more, desolate backwater of canada oh come on buddy. he's throwing shade on his own country oh. which we we're big lovers of canada we're all about canada yeah. oh canada and it's not like america doesn't have its own desolate backwaters exactly <laughs> which is 97 percent of our <laughs> great uh, nation as, as it were <laughs> uh but yeah thanks so much for the question you can always go to uh where you'll hear it.com go to you'll hear it.com and leave us a question via voice memo yeah. Or written. Yeah. Or you can... Um, Go to your podcast app, hit the old subscribe, maybe give us a share to your friends so we can get higher on that uh, ranking we're list. Trying to, we're trying to move up mainly for personal ego, but also for some business decisions as Bro, well. I think that's why why we do anything That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, no, we, we actually, what it is is like we're doing the podcast. This, ta this takes a fair amount of work um, from the whole team here. It's not just Adam and I. Yeah. Our producer, Andrew. We have an assistant producer just starting today, right? Alexis, yeah. yeah. No, I don't speaking of Andrew, it, does, it takes a lot of work, but especially when we say stuff like Dang. <laughs> yep um absolutely that's <laughs> just added three hours to his workload <laughs> um but we uh yeah no wait look we're doing the podcast we're throwing the info out there and so we our only hope is that it gets into as many ears yeah. all up in your ears yeah. ear food uh we want to get it to as many folks that are interested and that it can be helpful it's for a great them. roy hargrove record. great record yeah, one, yeah. one of my yeah. favorites so cool uh and we have our our ending tune today this is from our <laughs> 
We That's have when our- Adam is serious <laughs> about something. Okay. All right, guys. Let's all get on all the right. same team now. <laughs> uh, this is sent in by Christian Deckard. Uh, Christian Deckard, also one of our great transcribers. If yes. anybody here is a member of our, uh, an open studio course, you know that we have lots of killing transcription. We have, we, we're giving too many transcriptions. I mean, we're we're going to talk about that. We're right. over transcribing. We're, we're doing it just right. <laughs> uh, but Christian Deckard is a very talented person and uh, uh, sent in this tune, Pointing Out. All right. We'll hear it. 